this is George Gilbert from the Cube. We're at the San Jose Convention, Convention Center at the At Scale Conference. I'm with Nate Schloss from Facebook, and we're talking about the mobile web. Um, Nate, tell us um, a little about what you work on at uh, uh, Facebook and give us a little context for the talk you gave and uh, some of the things we should know about where the mobile web's going. Yeah, so I'm on the notifications team at Facebook. Um, a lot of my work lately has been around using JavaScript service workers to bring native features um, that generally only exist on like native web clients to the mobile web. Um, so push notifications is an example of something we've recently built um, that it's generally a native feature, but we've been able to build it um, on the mobile web for people using mobile browsers. Okay, so for um, IT, mainstream IT, that is trying to filter down all this knowledge that's coming out of these leading edge, you know, um, companies and the practices you're pioneering. Tell us some of the other things that if they've struggled with writing native apps, what are some of the other things that are migrating down to the mobile web that they should be aware of? So there's this new um, kind of paradigm on the, the web now called JavaScript service workers. Um, which are basically like pieces of code that exist outside of the web page um, and can kind of like they persist like native code would persist. So you can do a lot of like really interesting things. They, um, they act kind of like a, uh, a client side proxy. Um, so a lot of like the performance benefits you would get from native app by like having data on the app, you can get that from a JavaScript service worker. Um, and you also get things like push notifications and a lot of the other benefits that you would get by having native code. So you can use like if you if you're deciding like whether or not to, to build an app, if you already have a lot of skilled web developers, um, a good solution could be just to use like JavaScript service workers and like take advantage of a lot of native features without relearning a whole new skill set. Okay, so let me see if I can um, replay that in um, language that traditional developers might be more comfortable with. So when they built um, graphical uh, web apps, they borrowed. Um, concepts that we used in in the client server and even in the, the desktop era where you had you know the graphical view you had controllers and you had this abstract thing called model you know behind it like like what's the spreadsheet you know and then here's a view of your part of it would this be like a return to that where instead of having some of it over the network where you know you have a delay in getting to it you're putting some of these components in JavaScript back on the client? Definitely. Um, you can probably think of it as a bit of a controller, uh, maybe kind of some model there too. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely like it's code that persists. It's not the web, it's not the view, um, but it's like code that lives in the background and like can run the app or website. Okay, so we know that um, actually uh, Facebook had some challenges in their early implementation of mobile client using HTML5. It was a, so there were some performance challenges. So what's changed since then? Because it's very snappy now, and is this related to some of the technologies you're talking about that would be of relevance to others building mobile web apps? So the, the things we did, um, like Facebook wrote, like rewrote the apps to, to be native. Um, that's not the stuff I'm talking about. The stuff I'm talking about um, is more like new technologies that exist that didn't exist back when like Facebook was like initially building our mobile apps. Um, but it's things that like people can do on the mobile web now um, to get a lot of the benefits that like native apps give. It's still not everything. Like you can still like make like a much faster native app, but it's getting like a lot closer to all the features that are available on native for the mobile web. Would this include um, access to you know to the low level hardware, uh, you know like the f like the uh, camera and other sensors and things like that that it's always been difficult to get to without native? Um, so I think the long-term plan is yes. Service workers aren't there yet, but I do believe that eventually like the idea is to get like most of the native features um, available on the mobile web. So it's not really like, do I, like you have to go build a native app to like get everything. Like I can just navigate to a website, I don't have to download something and still get all of the advantages I would get by like having an app. So for uh, from the perspective of IT, this would be the best of the both of both worlds, having um, sort of mobile app-like experiences, but having all the infrastructure that the web has built up over 10, 20 years, like search and indexing and everything like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can reuse a normal web stack and like everything that you already like know and have built, um, and get most of the advantages you would get by having native app. 
Okay, very interesting. So, um, are, are are you pioneering this because Apple and Google don't want to, or is Google doing this because they would like to return things to their sort of web native home? Where what's the dynamics of the different companies trying to build these platforms? So I mean, ultimately, like we're working with like the people who are working on the new standards for service workers and stuff like that. Um, generally, just to make a better experience for users. Um, if like the website's faster, if you like can just like load it quicker, uh, you get push notifications on it. Overall, like everybody wants what's best for users, um, and building like more like native capabilities into web browsers is going to enable that. So would we see um, would we see this as a it's almost like instead of going to WWDC, the Apple de Developer Conference, you know, in June of every year, people would start going to um, this web native uh, conference and that might serve multiple platforms. So I think they complement, at least like with the state of the world right now, they complement each other really nicely. Um, like the web, like they're, they're not really like fighting against each other. Um, like native serves, like native apps serve somewhat of a different purpose than like the mobile web does right now. Um, and you still can't do everything with service workers that you can do with a native app. Right. Um, event, like, who knows how like stuff will evolve? But for at least like the foreseeable future, like things are going to be like very complementary towards each other. And and how should we look at that complementarity? What are the what are the distinguishing characteristics of each? Um, so it depends. I mean, like the mobile web, obviously, like you don't have to, there's, the barrier to entry is a lot lower. Um, people generally have web stacks. People generally like have developers who know how to develop for the web. Getting to a website's easy; you don't have to download an app. Like it's it's really easy from like the user um, and everybody involved. But you can still do a lot more with a native app. So it's there's still somewhat of a trade-off, um, and we'll see how the, a lot of this plays out. And is it just as easy to access back-end services, you know, whether the Google services or or Apple's cloud services? Yeah, um, I mean, a lot of most of these services are already like have setups to let websites run on them, um, and they're like fairly good. So, using any of these services will be fairly simple. Um, for example, like push on like Google Chrome, it works with GCM, which most like st like most people already are very familiar with GCM because it's like powering native push notifications. Okay, all right. So this is uh, George Gilbert. Thanks for joining.